In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to create some high-end premium micro interactions in Webflow. So as you can see with this example, this beautiful website, starlight.money, as I'm moving my cursor around, you can see that these lines are glowing and they're lighting up and they're following my cursor. So you might think this is a very complicated micro interaction. Yes, definitely. But it's actually very simple. So this video is going to be broken up into two parts. First, I'm going to give you a visual representation or explanation of how we're going to recreate it. Then we're gonna dive straight into Webflow so you can follow along. As you can see, we have a canvas. So recreating this effect is actually very simple. Now I'm gonna zoom in and the first thing we need to do is actually give it a background color. So this will be the background color of the entire web page, and it's going to be the same color as the dividing lines, as you can see on this website. Now, the second thing we need to do is hit R on my keyboard. I'm gonna draw down a few squares. Now, these squares are going to have a slight small gap of one pixel between them all. Now, I'm just going to put them into an auto layout, and I'm going to repeat them horizontally. And it, you're probably wondering, what am I doing right now? But just bear with me. I'm then going to repeat all these squares vertically and just have a one pixel a gap in between. And all I need to do is repeat them vertically. Now I'm going to group them all together and I'm going to change the color to a darker shade of gray. So if you look very closely and I might even change the background color a little bit more so you can see and I can exaggerate a bit more. You can see that this has created the effect of this checkered board effect or pattern, if you will. Now, all I need to do now is lock this layer and selecting the R on my keyboard, I'm gonna draw down another rectangle or square. I'm going to round the corners so much, it turns into a circle. And then I'm going to just simply blur this so much that it's at this nice, evenly distributed glow effect. Now remember, every step that I'm doing right now in Figma, we are just going to be redoing it inside Webflow. So as you can see, the last step is just simply dragging this circle underneath all the squares. And as long as I can make this effect or this circle follow my cursor, it's actually going to light up the lines. Now it's a little bit subtle right now, but if I go ahead and really blow this up, and we can actually change the fill of the border colors to be a little bit darker, you can see that this is going to create that same effect, just like that. So with that in mind, let's dive into Webflow and recreate this pattern. All right, so I'm inside Webflow and I've created an entirely new project. So the first thing we need to do, like I said, make sure you have your navigator opened by selecting this icon. You can make sure your body is selected and go all the way down and you wanna make sure you are changing the background color. Now I've got a background color already defined, so I'm gonna paste it in and it's 2F3036 and it's this nice navy background. So once again, it's going to be the background color of those dividing lines. Then what we need to do is hit Command E and this will open up the quick finder and I'm gonna put down a div. So div is short for division, which is another word for a container for all the elements that you want to put inside. Now I'm going to give this a class name. So this class name is going to be section underscore hero because if we take a look at the website, this is the hero section of the website. Now the next step is to make sure that this section, as you can see, the bounding box is 100% width of the entire viewport but in terms of height, it doesn't actually extend all the way down. But if we see this website over here, this pattern spans all the way from the top, all the way down to the bottom as well. So what we need to do is make sure that this section hero, in terms of size, we, it has a width of 100% and the height is also 100 viewport height, which means that it's going to span and force itself to always fit 100% of the viewport height of your browser. So once that is done, all we need to do now is hit Command E once again, put down another div block inside, and this time the class name is going to be hero-bg. So if I go over to my navigator, you can see that we have a body, which is going to be the entire web page. There is going to be a section called section underscore hero, and inside that we have a 
a div called hero-bg. This layer is going to be the same layer as you see over here. So this would actually be hero-bg. And in here, this layer is going to contain a repeating pattern of squares that we can repeat horizontally and vertically to fill up that 100% width and 100 viewport height. So over here, as you can see, I've already created a repeatable pattern. If I zoom all the way in, I'll explain to you what I've done. As you can see very closely, we have a square, which is 80 pixels, right? And then we have another square, 80 pixels. And what's happened is we have a one pixel a gap between them all, but these squares are also wrapped inside a frame that have a one pixel, let me just hover over here, it has a one pixel gap from the edges as well. So if we go ahead and add this to our background and repeat it, what it will do is it's actually going to do this, all right? It's going to repeat and you can see that it's going to repeat infinitely and make sure that it's always going to fill up horizontally. Now vertically, because there is also a one pixel gap underneath, if we go ahead and repeat this, it's going to recreate that entire pattern, just like that, just like what we want over here. So I'm going to utilize this uh, image. I'm going to export this out at two times, export this out. I might put this into, onto my desktop and just call this background. And the key point here is that when we pop over into Webflow, I'm gonna make sure that Hero BG has a width of 100% and also the height is also 100% because I want this to fill up that container. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the background section. I'm going to, uh, under image and gradient, hit the plus icon. I'm going to choose image. Under the assets uh, panel, I'm going to upload the file, go to my desktop and choose background.png and wait for this to upload. And once it's uploaded, you will see that it's actually gone ahead and added it to this layer. Now, what I wanna do is make sure that we do compress this at two times or showcase this at two times because for retina display, for, such as Apple displays, we wanna make sure that we have double the size and we reduce it by 50% because we then take double the amount of pixels and really compress it so we have very sharp borders and corners. So that's why I've two times selected and that's why I exported the image out at two times. I then also wanna make sure custom is selected. The width is 162 pixels because if we go back to Figma, you'll notice if I select this image, it is at 162 pixels. So we just wanna make sure that it is the right um, width. I also wanna position this at the top left corner of this entire uh, canvas or this entire div because we all we don't want the borders to be cut off. Then we just wanna make sure that this tiles vertically and horizontally. So if we just do horizontal, you can see it uh, scales out horizontally. If we just do vertically, it would just do vertically. If you don't want this to tile or repeat, you can hit the X, but we actually want it to go ahead and repeat across the entire canvas. Now, the last thing we wanna do is we could fix this and that is pretty much it. So we can click out of this modal and you can see if I go ahead and preview it, we have this beautiful checkered pattern for the background. So that's pretty much all done. Now let's head back over into the workspace. And the last thing we do need to do is for the Hero BG, what we wanna do is we want to make sure that this entire layer stays fixed. So when we are moving our cursor around or scrolling, this checkered board doesn't start moving. It stays fixed within the viewport. So under position, I'm gonna change this from static to fixed, okay? And because this is a fixed element, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure it's positioned to the top left and I'm going to give it a Z index of two. The reason why and what is Z index, when we go back into Figma, when we are creating different layers in Figma, as you can see, this glow is sitting underneath hero-bg. What we need to tell the browser is that hero-bg is second on the layer stack and the circle or the glow is first on the layer stack. So you have the first and then you have the second. And if you want to continue layering different layers on top, you have to have a higher Z layer. So now that we've got the entire pattern created, 
So the next thing I need to do is add the glow beneath the checkerboard pattern. So I'm going to hit Z on my keyboard and I might actually fix this sidebar to the left so I can always have that opened up. I'm going to select section underscore hero, hit command E and I'm going to hit put down a div. This div is going to have a class name of section, oops, sorry, hero dash glow. And I'm going to make sure that the width is going to be 300 pixels. The height is going to be 300 pixels and I'm gonna scroll further down, make sure the position is going to be absolute because I want to be able to position this uh, glow wherever I want. I'm gonna make sure it's selected in the top left corner. It doesn't really matter because we're going to be calculating the exact position with a little bit of code, but more importantly, I'm going to give this a Z index of one. So remember, if you want to layer things on top, it needs a higher Z index, but because we want this glow to be beneath the checkerboard, it's going to be one, a Z index. Scroll all the way down to background. I'm going to give this a background color of F8F3EA. And it's just this nice, uh, very light color with a tint of orangey yellow or beige. Then I'm going to give this a radius of 300 pixels to make it turn into a circle. And then I'm gonna give this an opacity of 30% so it lightens it. And the last thing I need to do is actually go ahead and add a filter. And the blur is going to be the filter. And we're gonna give this, I think maybe 150. And you can obviously play with this and see whatever works best for you. So I might just go 100 for now. And you can see it is a very subtle, nice, Glow. Now I've already gone ahead and created a very simple script that can calculate exactly where your cursor is and it will position this glow towards your cursor. So let's go over to our pages you get all, or you can hit P on your keyboard. Then you can head over to your home and you can click on the settings icon. And if you see a little arrow, make sure you just click on the little arrow and it will reveal the settings icon. Make sure you scroll all the way down to the bottom and we're going to paste this piece of code into the section where it's before the body tag, the closing body tag. And really this script, all it's trying to do is, it's trying to create a variable and it's going to target this variable towards an ID called home hero glow. So it's going to look for this ID in the web page, and then it's just going to go ahead, find and detect where the curse is going to be and then reposition home hero glow to these exact coordinates. Now I have left a link in the video description to get access to this code snippet if you wanna copy it. So from here, make sure you copy home hero glow, hit save, and this will save the code. Make sure you go over to your navigator, select hero-glow, make sure you go to your settings and make sure you have home-hero-glow uh, defined for your ID, make sure that is saved. And all you need to do now is go to publish, Publish this to your selected domains and you can just use the uh, default domain that Webflow has provided you. If you now preview your website, you'll notice that the actual glow is going to be following your cursor. So really creating these beautiful high-end premium micro interactions can be very, very simple. So that's it for this video. If you enjoy this video, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe for the diehard fans. And if you wanna learn more about Webflow, let me know in the comments because I do plan on sharing and producing more Webflow tutorials. Make sure to check out this video and I will see you in another video very soon. Whew.